multiply decimals and whole numbers visually. So this one's a little bit different. We're not used to doing those visual cues. So for this one, it says multiply. Use the number line to imagine moving 0.2 four times. Okay, so our problem here is 0.2 times four, or 0 0.2 times four. So for this problem, we're going to look at this number line. Each point here, or each tick mark on the number line, is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Okay, so if I go 0.2, so this would be one time, two times, three times, and four times. So 0 0.2, going 0.2 four times, is going to give us an answer of 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is our final answer there. Okay, so go at, let's go ahead and look at the next visual cue they're going to teach us about. And for this one, it says, which number line can we use to represent five times point, 0 0.5? So now they're doing the same thing that we just did in that last problem, but they're giving us a few different options. Okay, so we've got to look at, okay, first of all, we need to have, go five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's an option. One, two, three, four, five. So that's an option. One, two, three. That's not going to work. That's not five times. So I can automatically get rid of C there. Then when I look at A and B, okay, now I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, well, this goes 0 0.05 to one. And then 1.05. Okay, this tick mark right here is 0.05, okay? This up here says 0 0.5. So this one is not going to give us our right answer because it's moving 0 0.05 every time. This one is 0 0.5 and then it moves to one. And then halfway between one and two is going to be 1.5. So this one is moving 0 0.5 every time. So this one, whoops is going to be our final answer. And then I think we've got two more visual cues to do and then we will try some of these on our own. So multiply, you may use the models shown to help find the product. Now notice it says you may. If you can do this multiplication without using these models, you don't have to use the models. What the models show is that each one of these is one whole. So this is like a whole candy bar, a whole candy bar, a whole candy bar. Okay, so we have three whole candy bars, but we don't have the full p part of all the candy bars. We only have decimal three. So like in this one right here, we have three shaded. I need a better marker. We have three shaded out of 10. Well, we know that that is decimal three. Here we have three shaded out of 10. That's decimal three. Three shaded out of 10. So that's, whoops, decimal three. So we have three times of decimal three, which means we're gonna have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths. Okay, and when we write nine tenths as a decimal, we're gonna write decimal nine. And if you wanna put that 0 0.9, you can do that too. Last one here, which expression can we represent with the following model? So each one of these is gonna be one whole, just like with our tenths that we looked at in the last problem. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna look at right now is how many blue boxes do I have shaded in? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in each one of these, I have seven. Well, seven out of 100, each of these has um, seven shaded out of 100. So that's gonna be 0 0.07. And the same thing here, 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.07. 0 0.07 because 7 out of 100 written as a decimal is 0 
then I'm going to look and I say, well, I have 0.07 one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. So I need to find the number down here that says five times. Okay, so five times. This one doesn't have five times. And five times. And now am I doing five times seven tenths or five times seven hundredths? Five times seven hundredths. So C is going to be our final answer for that one. Grab some paper and pencil and let's practice some.